As you know, when we have a budget that's uh, several inches thick, there's a lot of good in it and a lot of things that we wish if we had our way would be different. And certainly that's the case with me. Uh, on the negative side, I'm disappointed we didn't do more on direct school aid through the gap elimination. As my colleagues have pointed out, we have the ability to increase the funding on the gap elimination by over a billion. In fact, if we wanted to, we could increase it by even more than a billion without raising taxes by transferring funds from the uh, $350 select cash give back that's going to occur this fall or by taking some of the strings off the money that we're sending throughout the state on the, on the universal pre-K and letting the individual schools use the money to address their top priorities. So while I'm very disappointed that we haven't done more to address gap elimination, I am encouraged that uh, there is a process, although informally, for us to submit a request for bullet aid to address unique situations that may be occurring in our district, and I look forward to utilizing that process. And I'm pleased in a number of other areas where we've increased child care, we've increased funding for a lot of very critical agricultural programs, we've increased the library aid, which is really important for a lot of our communities. Community services for the elderly, we increased by five million. We've restored the COLA, which has been a real problem for a lot of our human services agencies. So. While I'm disappointed we didn't go far enough on education aid, I am very pleased and I want to compliment all the budget staffs for the other fine work that's reflected in here in the other areas. For those reasons, I will be voting in the affirmative. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.